hello. Why come in the web? Just give me a sec. Ah, it's much better. In today's episode, I'm going to talk a little bit more the story of World War C202. What kind of war is this? So if we call the World War 240 the brick, so definitely this car is a block. As you know well, Volvo is a Swedish brand, but not all the Volvo made in Sweden. Like this one. It's made in Hungary. Probably you heard many success stories of the car factories from the Eastern Bloc, which produced under the license from big brands. Like the iconic Soviet car, the Lada 1200, which based on the 1967 European car of the year, the Fiat 124. They produced from the Lada 1.7 million cars in 18 years. Or in Romania, almost 2 million Dacia 1300 were made under the 35 years of the production. This car based on the French Renault 12. In Yugoslavia, they made 1.3 million of Fiat 128 under the name of Zastava or Yugo Scala. It was also a success story of the Polsky Fiat 125P with 1 million and the Polsky Fiat 126P with 3.3 million cars in Poland. Now let's see the story of the Volvo C202, which is not a very successful story. The C202 was manufactured in Hungary as a civilian version of the L3314 Swedish Army Utility Vehicle and also a cheaper alternative to the more expensive army vehicle, the C303. So the idea was producing a cheap 4x4 van for civil use. The Laplander was made in the co-production of the Chapel Automobile Factory in Hungary, which was a well-known track manufacturer after the Second World War. The production started in 1976 and the plan was to make 10,000 Laplanders in 10 years. After four years, they stopped the production. Only 3,322 were made. Three types were available on the market, hardtop, pickup, and canvas softtop. From the total, thousands were modified for special tests like ambulance, fire car, crew cab, and others back in Sweden. The car production was successful, but the product was unsellable on the market. So what was the problem? So the concept was outmoded and still expensive for the Eastern market. The market of the Comic-Con was full with much cheaper alternatives, like the US, the Arrow, the Tarpon, and others. Most of the cars stuck for years in the stock, and Volvo tried to sell them. So that's how many of them became army vehicle. An example, they served in the Falcon War. And that's also a story about uh, stack shipping to embargo Limia, which later sent to Iceland. So actually they were everywhere around the globe. From North America to Australia, from the Far East to South America. And still you can find few of them in the countries of the world. They never became so popular like the Defender, the Buhanka, the Pitzkawa. But they had a nice story too. But now let's focus for the Icelandic ones. All of the Laplander owners heard about them. So why they are so special? Total 262 C202 were registered here in Iceland. And big part of them with this canvas soft top. An open car for the Icelandic climate. Sounds a little bit weird. But don't forget, the original destination of the shipping was Libya, not Iceland. Around 150 were modified here from the Laplanders. They got a close body, mainly in Ragnar Wilson's workshop. The Icelandic body were very various and most of them were unique. Some of them extended in length or height or both. Only a large rear door left on the right side 
large windows. They got bigger tires. Sometimes the Volvo B20 engine swapped to different engine and so on the gearbox. Only a dozen left from them here in Iceland and some are beyond, but I know about a few nice projects. So there is still a hope. So guys, in a nutshell, that was the story of the Laplander. The story of the Icelandic version of the Volvo C202. The story of the black ship. Thanks for watching. And if you like, so just click on the buttons, leave a comment, and see you in the next episode. Bye.